Watson and Crick presented the double helix model of DNA, but how does this happen at molecular level was not clear. So for this, three models of DNA replication were proposed, conservative, semi-conservative and dispersive. In the conservative model, after replication, one progeny molecule contains both parental DNA strands and the other progeny molecule contains only newly synthesized DNA. Well, in semi-conservative model, two parental DNA strands separate and serve as a template for DNA synthesis. And the result is that both templates consist of one parental and one new strand. In dispersive model, the parental double helix is broken into double-stranded DNA segments, those act as templates for newly synthesized DNA. The segments then reassemble into complete DNA double helix, each with parental and new DNA segment interspersed. In this way, three models, conservative, semi-conservative and dispersive model predicted different distributions of parental and newly synthesized DNA after replication. Matthew Messelson and Frank Stahl developed a way to distinguish these molecules by using heavy isotope of nitrogen 15N. They replaced normal form of nitrogen in DNA bases with 15N and that resulted into a DNA which is physically heavier than normal DNA. Now if the parental DNA contains 15N while the progeny DNA contains the normal 14N isotope, different combinations of those two DNA types will have different densities, heavy heavy, heavy light and light light. To label the DNA, the scientists cultured bacteria in growth medium containing a 15N labeled ammonium salt and resulted in all DNA having heavy 15N. Then they shifted the bacteria to growth medium containing the normal 14N isotope and now all the newly synthesized DNA have normal density. These cultured samples were taken at different times corresponding to the replication cycles 0, 1 and 2. DNA was extracted from each sample and its density was determined by mixing it with cesium chloride and spinning in an ultracentrifuge. As the tube spin, a linear concentration gradient of cesium chloride forms with the lightest density at the top and the heaviest density at the bottom. At the same time, the DNA comes to equilibrium in the gradient where its density equals the density of the surrounding cesium chloride. If all the DNA molecules in the sample are of the same density, a single band of DNA results. If the DNA molecules in the sample have two different densities, two bands of DNA result. The position of the bands in the tube indicates the density of the DNA molecules in the sample. After one replication cycle, the conservative model predicted that there would be equal amounts of heavy heavy and light light DNA, which would result in two bands of DNA in the gradient. So that model could be ruled out. The semi-conservative and dispersive models both predicted combinations of parental and progeny DNA which could result in one band of intermediate density, so more analysis was required. To do this, second replication was done, two bands of DNA were seen, one of intermediate density and the another one of light density. The dispersive model predicted that after second replication cycle there would be four DNA molecules all of which contain the same proportion of light and heavy DNA. This would result in only one band of DNA in sample at a density between the intermediate and light density band. 
However, since two bands were seen, this model could be ruled out as well. The semi-conservative model predicted that the second replication would produce four molecules, two of which contain two light strands and two of which contain one heavy and one light strand. This would result in two bands in the gradient, one of intermediate density and another one of light density. This prediction matched the experimental results, providing evidence that the semi-conservative model was the correct model of DNA replication.